Hey guys, uh, hello everybody. I hope you guys are all doing really well. I had a little bit of time and I just really wanted to show you guys this plant here. It's in bloom. <laughs> uh, this is Diplodenia. It's in the family Apocanaceae and it's a native to South America. And I just got soil all over myself, so that's cool too. <laughs> uh, this plant is very commonly mistaken for the Mandevilla. I think this is because they have very similar flowers, but I can assure you they're two different plants. Uh, the main differences between Diplodenias and Mandevillas are that Mandevillas readily vine a lot easier than Diplodenias. Diplodenias have a little bit more of a compact, bushy growth habit to them. Uh, the leaves are a lot more glossy on the Diplodenia, whereas on the Mandevilla they're a lot more ruffled and velvety. And the cold hardiness is a little bit different too. So on Diplodenias, you're going to be cold hardy down to about 5 degrees Celsius. And then on the Mandevillas, about 7 or 8 degrees Celsius. They can't take quite as much of a punch. So as you can see here, the Diplodenia definitely does produce tendrils. It can climb up, I want to say, if you have a really big variety, maybe 6, 7, 8 feet tall. However, the Mandevilla, which is the other one, can grow 12, 15, 20 feet tall, so it's a lot bigger of a variety. So these guys here do attract hummingbirds. They attract a whole host of different types of butterflies. You can get these guys in a whole variety of colors. They come in pink, uh, they come in this trumpety, beautiful red color. They come in whites, they come in off peach. Uh, just a whole lot of variety to choose from, but all warm toned colors. These guys here are suitable for propagation. If you're gonna propagate these guys, I recommend doing it in the active growing season, which is usually anywhere from about April into early October here where I live in British Columbia. And when you're propagating, just one thing, if you're gonna take cuttings, I don't recommend taking these tendril cuttings. It might be, it might seem like a really good idea to get something that has a lot of vigor, a lot of growth to it, but at the end of the day you're not going to get a very good structure from a plant that's grown from one of these cuttings. Uh, you want to look for something that has a little bit more substance. I highly recommend cutting off, a, sacrificing a few of the blooms if you're going to grow cuttings just because they take a little bit of energy from the plant. I think the best time if you're going to take cuttings from this plant is later on in the afternoon because it's a little bit cooler gives them a little bit of time to adjust and i highly recommend soil propagation these guys from what i've tried i've tried propagating this plant about four times uh very successful with soil propagation i have my propagations over there uh however with the water propagation i haven't had any success i think that's just something to do with the mannerisms of this plant it doesn't like rooting so much in water so just something that i've personally found that i just kind of wanted to share these guys do benefit from supports you can grow them as you can see here in hanging baskets too i just have mine in a coconut fiber basket which needs repair <laughs> uh, you want to make sure these guys are in full sun uh, they will bloom way better for you in full sun. You want to make sure that they're away from cool drafts and you want to make sure that they stay somewhat on the dry side. So Diplodenia are always going to want slightly acidic soils. I think a pH value of about 6 is optimum for them. Uh, if you have a pH value that's below 6, you can always add a little bit of lime to the soil just to make it a little bit more um, basic so that it, it's not overly acidic for them. These guys are heavy feeders. I would definitely say that Diplodenia is a heavier feeder than Mandevilla. I recommend fertilizing these guys twice a week during the blooming season, and you'll get way more, like, way more blooms on them. Uh, I don't recommend deadheading, and I'll just say that although deadheading makes them a little bit more compact, it gives you better structure, they don't tend to rebloom. Uh, on the places where you did deadhead them. So just something to be mindful of. If you guys are pruning these, I also want to say that they are somewhat... Like, they're not edible, but they're definitely not, like, super toxic. Wouldn't eat them, but they do produce a little bit of a latex sap. 
So if you are, I, I feel like I say this a lot in my videos, but if you are allergic to latex, if you have a rubber allergy, if you're sensitive to saps, I recommend wearing gloves when you guys cut these. Uh, the diplodenia, if you keep on cutting it back, it can create a nice mounting shrub. They look amazing in containers. They like very loamy soils. They're native on a belt all the way from Rio de Janeiro, southern Brazil, all the way up in through so uh, Central America. They also grow in many of the Antillean islands. They grow in the Caribbean Sea, a uh, super large area. These guys are heat loving plants. I think they definitely bloom better when it's over 20, 22 degrees Celsius. Sorry to my American friends, I'm really bad with Fahrenheit, but definitely you want to keep them on the warmer side. And I think that coincides with direct sun. You want to make sure these guys are getting at least a good six, eight hours of decently direct sun. Uh, you can prune them back to about four inches above ground level, maybe even less, and then take them indoors with it when the winter comes and if, when it gets a little bit cool because these guys definitely will not tolerate a hard frost. If perchance you get a slight frost late in the night or early in the morning and the dew hits and say it's September for example and you want to prolong their uh, blooming time, you want to keep them alive for a little bit longer, what you can do is you can put a little tarp over them um, and once again you can prune them back. They tend to branch out and produce a whole lots of new sprigs of growth. I haven't personally had any problems with powdery mildew, but I have seen that people do get powdery mildew on these guys. Another problem is some people will get a lot of yellowing. Yellowing is almost always due to underwatering with diplodenia. You'll get a little bit of wilting. As you can see here, I do have a little bit of wilting. That is from overwatering. They are susceptible to rot. If you have more of a well-draining fibrous soil mix, you don't really have to worry about that too much. Uh, they should be just fine for you. Uh, they look really wonderful paired with other vining plants. Uh, they look great paired along with alamandas. They look wonderful with nasturtiums, other trumpet-shaped plants, jasmines. Um, yeah, another name for these guys is the rock trumpets. Uh, I know some people call them by that name. And what else should I say about these guys? Um, they're profuse growers. Definitely, I recommend giving them support if you want to encourage this long growth. Or maybe a trellis or an arbor. But if, if what you want is a really large statement piece vine, I recommend going the Mandevilla route. Uh, Mandevillas tend to be a little bit more expensive, but I think that they're quite worth it. In comparison to these guys, the Diplodenias. These guys, once again, they're more for borders, they're more for containers. Still a very beautiful plant in its own right. You can mix colors. Um, some of them are a little bit fragrant, some of them are not fragrant at all. Isn't that beautiful, you guys? Uh, the vast majority of them will have slightly more fragrance at night, is another thing. This red one, I think this is the more common one, in my opinion, doesn't really have too much of a fragrance. But that's okay because they reward you with these beautiful flowers. They remind me almost of the plumeria or like a really large form oleander. They remind me of Hawaii. Yeah, just a really beautiful plant. Uh, what else should I say? I'm trying not to be like long-winded, long but I'm trying to get across everything I want. Um, naturally speaking, with these guys' as tendrils, they will bind onto themselves and they will naturally braid themselves which is another really cool thing. This plant is somewhat flammable is another thing so if you're in an area that's incredibly prone to um, forest fires and whatnot just be mindful of that this is a very flammable plant. Uh, best time to water these guys is going to be in the morning just because if you water them while it's in direct sun you can get a little bit of blistering. Oh, there's a little spider there. <laughs> just noticed that guy. Uh, yeah. If your leaves get dusty, you can always just dust them off. If you're gonna overwinter them in a semi-dormant but evergreen state, so sometimes you can retain some of their foliage, I very highly recommend picking a south southern exposed window if you're in the south in, if you're in the northern hemisphere. If you're in the southern hemisphere, I recommend a northern facing window. Uh, the absolute brightest 
window that you can possibly find indoors because they don't tend to really thrive in the shade. They will go completely dormant, sometimes they'll die right back to the roots. If you have them growing along the side of a house, wow look at that, isn't that beautiful? Nasturtiums. Anyways, if you have them growing alongside a house, sometimes you can protect them enough with a thin layer of about an inch, inch and a half of mulch, and they'll come back right from the roots and act as a tender perennial. But for the most part, here in the Northern Hemisphere, in temperate gardens, we grow them as annuals because they're not super sturdy as far as the winter goes. So yeah, that is just my little introduction on the Diplodenia. All of this here will apply for growing Mandevilla too, but just keep in mind Mandevilla is a little bigger, it's a little more velvety, a little more ruffled, usually a little bit more fragrant and much more of a vine in nature. This one's more of a bush, but it's a beautiful bush. <laughs> so yeah, thank you for being here, thank you for watching, I hope you guys all have a wonderful blessed day, and yeah, till next time.